Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Full disclosure, it is almost 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. I realized that with my job and like the change in workload, home ownership, etc., the three videos a week that I was aiming for is not possible. <laughs> At least not while maintaining any sorts of shreds of relationship and sanity. And so I've been aiming for a video every Thursday. Haven't always been succeeding, especially when I have been hosting patron live streams on the Saturdays. Usually the week of a patron live, there isn't a Thursday video, which is unfortunate for the rest of you because like 10 people see some of my best work. <laughs> in the live stream. I feel like I'm doing my best work with these patron live streams. I'm putting together like researched show notes and outlines and like delivering thought-provoking, at least for myself, I'm enjoying it. I'm finding it thought-provoking um, content. In like full transparency, I have no content. <laughs> There's been a lot going on. We had two terminally ill folks in uh, my like family in-laws if I were married. I don't know what you call them when you're not married to your partner, but like when you've been together for 11 years, they're essentially in-laws. Some home ownership stuff. Because of the pandemic, Ontario is still in a lockdown. Vaccinations are like really slow to roll out. I personally live in like a hotspot, which means I did qualify for my vaccination. Canada is not doing quite as well with the vaccinations as the States, but we've been really trying to make our backyard usable because we anticipate being in lockdown for most of the summer, and if not in lockdown, the in-person gatherings that will be allowed will be small. So we want to have a space where we could put like, have like one couple over and put two chairs on one side of the backyard and two chairs on the other side of the backyard. Have us be distanced, but at least in the same physical space, just for like our mental health and sanity, like to see other human beings without a screen. So we've been working really hard on getting our incredibly neglected backyard, even remotely close to like a nice place to be. And the thing is, I have so many ideas. There's a big project on my list that I know would bring me so much joy, but I don't have the time to give it the love that I know it needs. It's been a little bit of a mess and I just wanted to give you that up front, also, pro tip, if you go to a COVID funeral, bring more than one mask because my skin was looking pretty good and then uh, spent some time crying in a mask and then having to wear that wet mask for the rest of the day. I really desperately, for arbitrary reasons, like for like the self-accomplishment reasons, really want to get up a video this week. I'm going to do something that gives me a taste of what I would really like to do with this bigger project that I don't have the bandwidth for right now, but also create the content. As you can tell from the title of this video, I will be tier ranking Tamora Pierce books. <laughs> this feels like such a cop out, but also it's it's like literally the only thing that like my brain can can do at this point after like working for nine hours already and just trying to human. So maybe I'll put you on the little tripod. Hold please. Editing Emily, we'll try and fix this crookedness. If not, it's a Dutch angle, right? For those of you who don't know, Tamara Pierce is one of my favorite authors, like favorite childhood authors. Um, I usually reread the Song of the Lioness series and the Protector of the Small series once a year. Well, when I was a kid, it was middle grade fantasy that then later got bumped up to young adult fantasy. And it's one of those weird things where because the protagonist starts out nine years old and ends the series 18, 20 years old. I can't remember how old Alana is by the end, but like an adult working adulting. It is a weird thing to market Alana as a romantic sex having adult to a nine year old, but it's also weird to market a nine year old being upset about having her period to a 20 year old. Like it's it because of the span, like the scope of the series, it's a weird thing to market. So I guess young adult is like the natural, like in between, we don't know where this goes. I love Tamora Pierce. However, there are definitely certain books that I only read once when they came out. This is just a preset. I'll leave the tier maker down below in case you are a Tammy fan and want to do this for yourself. We have literally life-changing, talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, 
too many words, but all right. Very good, pretty okay, and skip on the reread. The first thing that I'm gonna do is start with the skip on the reread because there are actually books here that I have never reread. Like I will work my way through Alana, Dane, and Kel, and then I have never touched Allie, and I have never gone back to Becca Cooper. I'm gonna put the books that I have never reread, essentially skip, on my reread in the bottom and we'll just eliminate them right away. The Becca Cooper trilogy, I'm not sure if that's the official trilogy, again it's not a favorite, is probably Tamara Pierce's most recent, I guess the New Mare Chronicles, I'm not seeing that on here, I've only read that twice though but I actually reread it. The dog themed trilogy is set several hundred years before the Alana books. It almost seems like in a time before society has regressed to the point where women can't occupy positions of power because we're set in Tortal, but we have female police officers. Like, essentially, Becca is training to be the Tortalan equivalent of a police officer. I honestly can't really remember what happens, but I know that it's somehow a family member of George Cooper who comes up in basically all of the other Tortal set books. He's quite a figure. It's something that like I definitely read when they came out, like it was an auto buy for me because it was Tamara Pierce. They're like letters or journal entries, I can't remember which right now. It was a different format, very different voice from the rest of the Tortal books, and so I just didn't reread them. And then the Alley books were kind of the same thing, so um, Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen follow Alana's daughter, Allie. And I think it's weird because you are seeing the lioness from a very different perspective. Like, following Alana as a character, as like a young person and knowing her, is very different from seeing her from the perspective of any of the other characters. Like, seeing her from Dane's perspective is different, and Kel's perspective is different. Um, but then seeing the parent-child relationship, um, I don't think I really loved seeing one of my favorite characters from the perspective of her child. Again, I only read them once, but like, I don't remember the plot really like it doesn't super stand out so again it's on my list to reread but I haven't and there's a reason that like I will go through Alana Dane and Kel over and over again and skip these books it's like I, I have no desire to read them again which is maybe my bad maybe I will like these more as an adult coming at them from a slightly different perspective than I did when I was I think these came out when I was in high school this is gonna be a lot more difficult so I think I have to put Alana, the first adventure, as literally life-changing because this was the first book that I read by Tamora Pierce. It was one of the first, like, books that I really remember latching onto as a kid. I think my mom gifted these to me when I was 10 or 11. I can remember falling in love, getting totally sucked in to this fantasy universe. Like, this is one of the first pieces of fantasy literature that I ever read. Like, other books that I was reading at the time, um, I think, were a lot of, like, The Littles, Animal Arc, Bailey School Kids, and I guess not all of those are set fully in, like, the contemporary, but, like, Ramona, um, Judy Bloom, like, that kind of stuff. Like, I was very much in the more contemporary kids lit stuff, whereas I feel like my interest in fantasy literature definitely came out of falling in love with the Alana books. And Alana is one of the reasons that as a kid, like, I first started researching feminism and, like, started identifying with feminist causes, even as, like, a really young person. Like, I started pulling out books in the library. I can see this book as a book that shaped me as a human. Like, the other book that I have to say that is, like, literally life-changing, I think is, uh, Squire, because, <laughs> uh, Squire made me fall in love with Kel, and Kel is the, one of the most subversive characters in Tamora Pierce's body of works. It's my favorite, I think. Is it my favorite of the... Kel books? I think it's my favorite of the Kel books. I did my master's thesis, in part on Protector of the Small. Like, I studied and and wrote academically about Protector of the Small, which, again, pretty life-changing thing to focus your research as an academic 
around a series. If those are the two that are literally life-changing, that means all of the rest of the books fit into the rest of the categories in theory, right? So uh, let's go through the rest of the Alana series and tier rank them as like a thing in and of themselves. Uh, Woman Who Rides Like a Man frequently skipped that one on the reread. While it is one that I definitely reread more than the other books, if I'm going to read the Alana Quartet and I'm not feeling it, I will skip Woman Who Rides Like a Man. It's literally Alana goes into an indigenous tribe as a colonizer and facilitates the king colonizing the Bajir tribe. She also sort of like white feminist saviors herself into the tribe. Not a great look. Linus Rampant is pretty okay. And In the Hand of the Goddess is very good. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put Lady Knight as talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, because I feel like it's one of the only books where well, the only books within this series, within this universe, um, Tamora Pierce is always sort of updating her feminism as it changes with the times. So by the end of Lady Night, Kel has a job and she has a found family, but she rejects romantic relationships. And I feel like it's quite subversive. It subverts so many patterns for women in literature. This is literally why I, w I wrote my master's thesis on this. Uh, we often see this pattern where a woman, like a very subversive woman, someone breaking the boundaries, someone inserting themselves into male-dominated spaces, like really breaking the rules, becomes a lover, then a wife, then a mother, they give up their career for those things, or they die. And Kel does neither. She finds a family, she adopts a child, she prioritizes her career, and she loves many people in her role as this protector of the small, but she doesn't follow that pattern that we see putting really progressive, really subversive women in their place. Um, so I think it's excellent, but it's not my favorite, so I'm not gonna put it in literally life-changing. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna put Paige is very good and First Test as very good. Although I would say that First Test very much follows the formula of like Alana, whereas I think Paige, we see Kel sort of taking her own path, but I think they're both very good. I'm always very happy to reread them. The Immortal series is probably the one that I have reread the least. Wild Magic is... My gut says pretty okay. Is that how I really feel about it? Is it very good? Okay, so Wild Magic is about Dane, who has this like unique brand of magic, like very powerful magic that gives her the ability to talk to and heal wild animals. Alana and a lot of the other people who have the gift throughout the Tortal universe have more of like a a healing or fighting type of magic. Dane's is unique and specific to animals. To be honest, I don't, out of the Immortals books, Wild Magic isn't the one that stands out to me. The one that stands out to me is Wolf Speaker. Um, I think because I went through a phase where I was obsessed with wolves, I was consuming any and all children's books, young, like, middle grade books that involved wolves. I loved Wolf Speaker. I loved the characters of the pack that Dane lived with, and I wrote my very first fanfiction. I was inspired to write fanfiction before I even knew that fanfiction was like a thing that people were doing online because I was an actual child and we didn't have the internet yet. So I didn't discover like online fanfiction until much later, but I was writing like pen and paper fanfiction for myself. Uh, with Wolf Speaker, so I do think that I'm going to put it in this like show-stopping thing because it really spoke to something in me as a kid and inspired this fan fiction. I'm not sure that like actually in terms of quality, in terms of what it's doing, that it belongs in that tier, but I'm gonna put it there. And then I am going to put Emperor Mage and Realm of the Gods in pretty okay. They flesh out this world with the immortals, but they're not ones that I reach to as a comfort read. Actually, the whole Immortal series is not something that I reach to for a comfort read. Like, I will frequently, if I'm in a reading slump or having a really bad day, I will pop on either Alana or like First Test or 
any book in the the Kel quartet, depending on what I'm feeling. Like, like I will pop on that audiobook as sort of like a comfort thing. Whereas I would never reach for the Dane books as a comfort read or a way to get out of a reading slump. This is somebody else's setup thing, but uh, the Numer book, Tempest and Slaughter, does technically belong on here. I think Tempest and Slaughter is very good. Maybe Emily in, in post and editing will pop in a picture of Tempest on this chart. It's one that I've actually read twice despite it being newer. Like I tend to, as you can see with where I've put the newer books, I read them once and then I never touch them again. Whereas I've reread the new Mare book twice. I liked seeing this figure that we meet as an adult in the Immortal series as a child. I liked seeing what he was like as a child, how he like learned at this magical university, also magical university, right? Like all of these other people either aren't in school because Dane isn't in school. Um, she's Numera's apprentice or they are in like night school. Kel and Alana are in night school and they're not specifically learning like the academic theory of magic. So it was nice to see Numera in the university setting and also because again, like I've mentioned, Tamora Pierce's feminism is evolving with contemporary, like it's evolving alongside intersectional feminism as it, as it exists today. So with each book you see more and more progressiveness, more and more intersections. In Tempest and Slaughter we have like the most diverse cast of characters, which makes sense for a university setting, like universities are typically super diverse, drawing in people from all walks of life to study a specific topic or if your university specializes in something, right? Like it it draws in a really diverse crowd generally. And then we also see like just casual queerness. So many books make queerness such a big deal, but in the Tempest book, one of Numera's teachers is like, oh yep, this is my husband. And you're like, all right, cool. You've got a gay teacher and it's not like he's the capital G gay teacher. He's just a casual human existing who happens to be queer, which I feel like we don't see a lot. Maybe more now. Like I think maybe things like Becky Albertalli's works, you'll have like just gay people existing in the world. So I think Numer fits in very good. So that is my little life update. My little tier ranking. It's like scratching that itch of like the larger project that I really want to do. You can maybe kind of guess what I, what the topic of that project is. I'm not gonna tell you the angle or <laughs> what I want to do with it should I manage to carve out the time. And tier ranking it, thinking about these books, slightly scratches that itch. If you are a Tamara Pierce fan, let me know in the comments down below. How does your tier ranking compare. And I think I'm more interested in the polar opposites. Like, is there a book that I put as like skip on the reread that is your literally life-changing book? I will leave this linked so that you can do it yourself. If you want to tier rank it, share it with some other Tamara Pierce fans, tier rank it. May is Asian Heritage Month and it just so happens that my patron drop-in book club is The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami. And this is a stunning little, oops, those are my post notes, stunning little book that we are reading and discussing for the live show on Saturday, May 29th at 4 p.m. That is patron exclusive. It's available to patrons at all tiers. So if you are interested in reading along and discussing, links for that are down below. I hope that you're staying safe, that you're following guidelines wherever you are. I know it's different all over the world now, depending on how vaccinations are rolling out where you are. It's been a strange time and it's like, it's hard to see folks in places where there are more vaccines and people do have more freedoms. <laughs> and like to see photos of like booktubers that I follow getting together and like taking some photos together. And then like, I briefly saw my family once last weekend masked in the backyard from many feet away and like I hadn't seen them since January I think before then so like it's it's been hard times it's been strange times yeah I hope that you're all doing okay if you have any video topics anything that you would like to see me do because the things that I want to do take more time and planning than I can throw together 
in like a weekend for the next Thursday. So if you have anything that you would like me to film, anything like that that you would like to see, leave those down below as well. Thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible. I really appreciate the work that they enable me to do, the time that they do allow me to carve out from my work week. Thank you. I will see you soon. Bye.